2007 was a year of celebrations and new beginnings at Purdue University. With the completion of the campaign for Purdue, retirement of one Purdue president and the hiring of another, the 100th anniversary for science and the Block P, and the 50th anniversary for Grand Prix, the Recreational Center, and the School of Management, it's a great time to be a Boilermaker. I hope you share the pride I feel when I see all that's been accomplished this year. The first half of the year came to a dramatic close with the conclusion of the hugely successful campaign for Purdue. The campaign exceeded its original goal by $400 million and ended up raising a total of $1.7 billion. Together, we have created opportunities for youth. 300 additional faculty, increased scholarships, increased diversity, increased engagement, the $350 million Discovery Park, a billion dollars in new and remodeled facilities. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. The end of the campaign also marked the conclusion of the seven-year presidency of Martin Jiski. He chose to retire in July, but he and wife Patty are staying in the Lafayette area. So when you put it all together, it's been amazing, an amazing honor, uh, amazingly fulfilling opportunity, the thrill uh, of a lifetime. And each one of you has played a decisive role in it. Here it is. <laughs> Small but mighty. Jiski became the first recipient of the Neil Armstrong Medal of Excellence presented by former astronaut and Purdue alumnus Neil Armstrong. This medal honors outstanding contributions to the Purdue student experience. Jiski also became the 23rd recipient of the International Citizen of the Year Award from the International Center of Indianapolis. He will now be vested with the hood. The Jiskis also received honorary degrees and had buildings named for them. The Martin Jiski Hall of Biomedical Engineering and the Patty Jiski Early Care and Education Center. The 11th president of Purdue University. France Cordova, the former chancellor at the University of California, Riverside, was introduced in May as Purdue's new president and as the university's first female chief executive. There are lots of firsts with my presidency. First woman, first X-ray astronomer, first NASA chief scientist, first Latina, first soccer mom. Her husband, Christian Foster, joins Purdue as director of K-12 science education in Discovery Park. We just couldn't imagine a nicer reception than this. Thank you. Upon her arrival in mid-July, Cordova began meeting faculty, staff, students, and off-campus constituencies. For example, at a campus-wide ice cream social and at the Black Expo in Indianapolis. And this is the LSF building where we're gonna go. She toured Purdue's regional campuses. Her stop at Purdue Calumet included throwing the ceremonial first pitch at a Railcats game. She rode in the parade during Purdue Day at the Indiana State Fair. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. And she greeted students moving in for the fall. My highest priority will be the excellence of a Purdue education for our students and the quality of life and opportunities for learning that they can experience. <laughs> Students were among the hundreds attending the dedication of the Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering during homecoming weekend. It's the cornerstone of Purdue's strategic plan and the university's commitment to remaining at the forefront of engineering research and education. 16 of Purdue's 22 astronaut alumni and the widow of another were also there, including the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong and the most recent man on the moon, Gene Cernan. This building is a recognition of all the steps any of us ever made in a space. Why so many astronauts from Purdue? I do know that when we leave here, we are indeed special. We're a boilermaker. We come with one of the finest educations we can find from any university in the country. And so we dedicate this magnificent new building, but by itself, it cannot impart knowledge. It requires innovative faculty, skilled staff, curious and determined students to produce those graduates who will provide a host of societal advantages. 
the entrance to the new Armstrong Hall is highlighted by a statue depicting the first man on the moon as a student. What other school would put a petrified student on a pedestal alongside an engineering building? The building also features a replica of an Apollo capsule and a sample from the moon. The lunar sample was given to Purdue by Martha Chaffee, whose husband perished in a 1967 Apollo accident. Her football game presentation was recognized at the annual President's Council dinner. It will help inspire a new generation of explorers who will stand on the shoulders of giants like Roger Chaffee. We have what is surely a first. Another highlight from that dinner, it was the first time four Purdue presidents ever gathered together. Three. Two other new buildings opened this year. The $12 million Gerald and Edna Mann Hall was dedicated in May in Discovery Park. We'll light the way to the future on issues that impact people and our entire nation and world through research in areas such as cancer, healthcare delivery, and homeland security. The 20,000 square foot Beck Agricultural Center was dedicated at the end of October. It will provide facilities for teaching, training, and research at Purdue's agronomy farm. This is a great day in the history of Purdue University. Several homecoming week events were held to celebrate new facilities. <laughs> Ground was broken for the Wayne and Mary Hockmeyer Hall of Structural Biology. The nearly 66,000 square foot building will provide a home for structural biology, a key research area in the College of Science, which celebrated its centennial this year. This nice Wonger aviation technology building was unveiled at the Purdue Airport. Fundraising success was celebrated for Bill and Sally Hanley Hall. This facility will house the Human Development Institute, which fosters research on families, aging, and leadership. <laughs> Fundraising success was also celebrated for the $33 million Roger Gatewood Mechanical Engineering Wing. This is another great day for Purdue University. A new $12 million building was celebrated to house Purdue's top-ranked Department of Hospitality and Tourism Management. <laughs> At the Fort Wayne campus, IPFW dedicated the $25 million John and Ruth Reinhardt Music Center in October. In a further effort to improve diversity, October saw the dedication of a new Native American Educational and Cultural Center on the West Lafayette campus. In athletics, a new $7 million tennis center was dedicated in May. This Dennis and Mary Lou Schwartz Tennis Center eliminates a void that has existed on this campus for 138 years. This facility was built uh, with an eye toward championships. This is a very exciting uh, day for us. Also in May, Athletics Director Morgan Burke unveiled plans for an $82 million overhaul of Mackey Arena. He says this will bring the 40-year-old campus landmark into the 21st century while preserving its rich history and tradition. That facility will include a sports medicine complex that will be three and a half to four times larger than the current space in Mackey Arena. The strength and weight training facility will be four times larger and an oversized basketball practice court will also be in place. The men's basketball team returned to the NCAA tournament in 2007, where it lost to eventual national champion Florida in the second round. <laughs> to start the 2007-2008 campaign, Matt Painter's team featured many new faces. The Boilers showed great promise, as demonstrated in this upset win over defending Big Ten champion Ohio State. The 2007 women's basketball team fell to North Carolina in the regional finals after defeating Ohio State to become Big Ten tournament champion. For the 2007-2008 season, coach Sharon Versip and her team were working to overcome major injuries. Even so, they were getting sweet victories such as this one over Wisconsin. At the Motor City Bowl in Detroit, Purdue squeaked by Central Michigan 51 to 48, kicking the winning field goal as time expired. 
the 99 combined points tied the second highest total for any bowl game. Junior quarterback Curtis Painter was selected the game's most valuable player. Purdue fans boilered up at a pregame tailgate party sponsored by the Purdue Alumni Association and the Champion Center of West Lafayette. The event featured comments from several speakers, including President Cordova. That Purdue is one of only 13 schools in the nation to play in 10 bowl games during the last 11 seasons. So I think that deserves a really big hand. Today is about the present and it's also about the future. In early January 2008, Danny Hope was named football associate head coach. Following the 2008 season, Joe Tiller will retire and be replaced by Hope. The key to us was to make a smooth transition, something Purdue has never been able to accomplish in its history, and not to foster or breed the uncertainty that would hinder future recruiting efforts. I think he's the right guy at the right time, and uh, I think that uh, Purdue football uh, will be very, very good in the future, will prosper in the future. Hope will coach the offensive line in 2008. When he takes over, many things will stay the same, since Hope was an assistant under Tiller for six years, before he spent five years as head coach for Eastern Kentucky. We did a lot of things to Joe Tiller way at Eastern Kentucky University, and I think that uh, when the time comes, it'll be an easier transition uh, because of that. In other Purdue sports, the women's soccer team won its first Big Ten Tournament Championship. The team advanced to the second round of the NCAA Tournament before falling to Indiana. The volleyball team advanced to the NCAA Tournament second round for the fourth straight year. Boilermaker music echoed through the Iowa State Capitol in October when the Glee Club helped celebrate the awarding of the World Food Prize to produce Philip Nelson. The Sholey Chair Professor in Food Processing was honored for discovering aseptic processing, which allows fruits and vegetables to be packaged for long-term storage and bulk transportation without losing nutrition or taste. We can go into particularly the developing parts of the world and get milk, for example, into remote areas of, of the country and uh, without the, the requirement of having that product refrigerated. Can you see that bulging in? Another award went to Les Geddes, the Showalter Professor Emeritus of Biomedical Engineering. He received the National Medal of Technology for his many medical breakthroughs, including an improved form of CPR and a better monitor for premature infants. Two aviation technology students placed first among the five college teams in the annual Air Race Classic for Women. Team Captain Katie Sparrow, a May graduate from Greeley, Colorado, and co-pilot Marie Janice, a senior from Valparaiso, Indiana, placed fourth overall among the 47 teams. Yeah, you just need to pry this out. Purdue students at the IUPU campus in Indianapolis revved up for racing in 2007. The Purdue School of Engineering and Technology became the first in the state to offer a degree in motorsports. The 50th Grand Prix saw the first female driver win the 100 lap 50 mile kart race. Liz Lehman, a junior in management from Fort Wayne, has been racing for 14 years. The guys I'm sure don't appreciate getting beat by a girl, but when the helmet's on it doesn't matter and I couldn't be more happy and more proud to be the first Purdue Grand Prix female winner. It's just a great, great honor. The Recreational Sports Center celebrated its 50th anniversary with a 50s night that included swing dancing and root beer floats. The Cranert School of Management also had a 50th celebration with activities and speakers, including former U.S. Senator George Mitchell. The concern of happy life. Cultivating happiness was the subject of a talk by the Dalai Lama as part of homecoming. <laughs> Homecoming also featured the 6th annual Boilermaker Night Train Parade and crowning of the Homecoming Queen and King, Amanda Fox from Indianapolis and Tom Sito from Evansville, Indiana. Another homecoming highlight had President Cordova twirling a baton as she led the band and fans to the game. 
Homecoming also featured the largest ever Block P as the alumni band joined the All-American Marching Band to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Block P. More than 9,600 students joined the ranks of Purdue alumni this year. An early winter storm forced December graduates to traipse through 10 inches of snow. Sword to defend the Constitution of the United States. December also marked a commissioning ceremony for 35 graduates from Purdue's ROTC programs. The 2007 Special Boilermaker Award. The 2007 Special Boilermaker Award honored Deborah Sheets from the Office of the Registrar for her dedication to the well-being and success of students for more than 30 years. The, 2007 Outstanding Young Alumni Award. the winners of the 2007 Young Alumni Award were Lori Zitzbiorski from the Purdue Club of St. Joe Valley and David Ermes from the Purdue Club of Cleveland. Other 2007 alumni activities included the annual class parade to John Purdue's grave during Gala Weekend. On increasing diversity in many different directions. An alumni reception at the Indiana Black Expo. To learn, to share your experiences, to celebrate Purdue together. A conference for alumni club officers. And, we'll raise a shout and a senior send-off for students graduating in May. And we hope you've enjoyed this 2007 newsreel. Your association's been hard at work building a stronger university with a great alumni base. We hope that you enjoy it and hail Purdue.